Shalom and welcome to Students of Torah. This year is entitled Harbayit number 112. How does Psach work? So, this series that we're going to have on Psach Halacha is really about Harbayit, but really is about all areas of Halacha that anyone that Paschal and Shilas needs to know. One obvious question one may ask about Harbayit is so many posts can prohibit it in the Haredi world. Sephardic world, the Tilumi world, Hasidisha world. So how can anyone think of Paschaling differently? It's clearly rove. We have a majority. And isn't the rule, Ahari Rabim Lahatot, we go after rove, after the majority, and that's the end of the discussion. How can anyone, myself included, say anything differently? Pascha differently for the community. And for myself, you have rove. Rove is Maharia. Rove decides. The majority decides. So we need to really analyze the sugya of rove, how it works. So first of all, in Shoftim, it talks about when there's a machlokas, and you're not sure what to do. Local rabbinim cannot come to a conclusion. So go up to the Beit HaMikdash, to the Sanhedrin, and discuss it with them. And the Pasuk makes it clear in Shoftim. You find out what the Pesach is, Tamei, Tahor, Chayev, Pato, whatever it may be, and you follow. And if you don't follow, you Chayev Mitah, liable for the death penalty. So it seems pretty clear. You follow the robe. But that's talking about Sanhedrin. But even within Sanhedrin, it's a little bit tricky. The first Mishnah in Horiot says that when based on Paskins, if they make a mistake, and people follow them, so they're just following the Baitan. Who should bring the Korban? The Baitan, not the follower. What did he do wrong? But if it's a Tamachacham that knows the Baitan made a mistake, then he shouldn't have followed them. And if he ate that food, which he said was treif, but they said it was mutter, he has to bring the Korban. He was wrong for following them. Now, wait a second. And Shoftim says he's supposed to follow the Baitan, the Sanhedrin. Horiot says you shouldn't follow if you're Tamar Chacham and you know they did something wrong. How does it work? So the Ramban in the commenting the Rambab Sefer Mitzvos, he has 14, Rambam has 14 uh, chapters of introduction. Each one is a Shoresh. So Shoresh Rishon, page 14. Ramban says, you must follow whatever they say, left, right, whatever they say you follow. And then page 14, he writes, but if a person is a Tamachacham, he's royal or rise a Tamachacham, that he could pask in Shilas. Then the Mishnah, the first Mishnah in Horios tells him he should argue. He should go up to the Beit in Yerushalayim and argue the point. Till he gets there, he holds by his point. Once he arrives and he argues it out with them, and he must argue it out with them, if he doesn't win them over, then they heard his point, there's Masao Matan discussion back and forth, and they still reject his point. So now we had the proper Masao Matan discussion with the, this rabbi who argues, and they still hold by their opinion and say, Mutter, and it's permissible, then he cannot argue. That's it. Because there's a clear psak that they gave after they heard him out. According to the Ramban, a crucial point here is masa umatan, discussion back and forth. Then, once you have the rove of the majority in this psak and they heard him out, they still rejected him, then Hishita is gone because the Beit Nagadol rejected it at that point. So, this is an important insight into how rove of the Sanhedrin works. The rove majority works once there's a proper process of masa umatan. Mitzvah Shem in the next shiur will show further what the ramifications are for this concept. Shalom.